Roberts, good to have you on our program. Thank you for being here. Good to see you, Scott. Steve perfectly summed it up. So some were concerned that inflation progress could stall. Do you share those concerns? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I think uh, if I were sitting at the Fed, I'd want to see more evidence that this inflation improvement is going to continue. And the reason that I'd be very cautious uh, is substantial amount of fiscal spending. Inflation Reduction Act spending, Infrastructure Act, unspent ARPA money. I think while uh, monetary policy is very restrictive, fiscal policy is very stimulative. And so I would be on guard about that if I were at the Fed. How much more evidence is, is warranted before they actually make that first move to, to cut rates? They've already suggested that they're going to cut before inflation gets down to target anyway. What's yeah. the magic evidence or the magic number that allows Jay Powell to do that? Uh, they're, they're expecting continued disinflation on goods, even with the supply chain issues in the Middle East. The, the sector I'd be watching, and I, I'm sure they're watching, is the service sector, where inflation's been sticky. Uh, I don't think you need to see uh, uh, a, a lot of improvement, but you need to see the numbers heading in the right direction. And I think the fear would be you could even see a backup in inflation uh, here in the near term. And so I, I, I don't think you see, need to see a lot of improvement. You just, know, you, just, you just need to see the numbers not going backwards. I feel like they, they almost have a conundrum, you know, on their hands and part of what they suggest in the minutes today. Some saw inflation risks in strong demand. The, the premise there being, well, if the economy remains now this strong, much stronger than we expected it to be at this point, then that could cause even higher demand, which could cause inflation to go either back up or just remain sticky, but yet inflation is clearly coming down towards target. It's a real delicate needle thread. It is. And so uh, getting down to the low threes was always going to be, I think, very doable. The issue is how do you get from the low threes down into the twos? And um, the, the, the issue for the Fed is what, what, they, what they don't want to do is start lowering rates and then have negative reports where they have to stop or even go backwards. But the reality is there, there's likely to be room to cut. Uh, but I think it's dicier when you have this size of fiscal stimulus. I don't think it's being talked about nearly enough, the amount of fiscal stimulus being pumped into the economy in these major projects around the country which are the type of stimulus you typically do uh, post-recession, not pre-recession. And I think that's what they're dealing with. Well, but in part because of that, you don't think we're going to have a, a recession. I know that soft landing th seems to be the, the prevailing thought for many at, at this point. You share that. I do. Uh, as long as you remember, we're running deficits. Last year's deficit was over 7 percent of GDP. That, that's the kind of deficit you might see in a recession. And even in past recessions, the deficits haven't been that high. It's, it's historically very unusual to run a deficit that high when you've got full employment. And so, yes, I don't think you're going to see uh, a, a recession. Uh, the issue is how much longer can we keep leveraging up at the fiscal level? Debt to GDP is over 100%. And so uh, the, the issue is this soft landing isn't free. It comes in the cost of interest expense in the federal government heading toward a trillion dollars, not this year, but next year. And I think that could turn out to be a bigger problem for us to deal with.